All right, so after you know uh, exposing you to type inference, I want to talk a little bit about the Java ecosystem, at least as it stands today, right? You're, some of you are learning this language for the first time. Some of you may have learned it before, but didn't really have a sense of where it came from or where it's going. And this is a fun thing to talk about. So, so let's get into it. I'm going to uh, navigate over here to the, um, to the Java version history. Uh, you can find this yourself on, on Wikipedia. And we'll, we'll just kind of look at this together. And, and I am not an expert at the history of Java. It's not the class I teach. Um, but I do have a sense as a practitioner and as someone who's been kind of around in computer science for a little bit longer than some of you about some of the recent events that have shaped this trajectory. So, um, you know, the original uh, Java language came out in version 1.0, obviously, in, in 96. So this is not a young language. Um, you know, that's, you know, 24 years ago. Um, Java's been around for a while. Um, it's not as old as some older languages like C, but it's not as young as some newer languages like Kotlin or Rust or Go or um, TypeScript or things like that. Um, and so one of the things that I think is really interesting, there's a couple things that are interesting about this. So if you look at sort of, you know, where Java went, right, um, from 96 to 2011, uh, 2014, you had eight, and these are basically eight releases. They've changed the numbering, right? You'll see, you'll see originally it was like 1.0, 1.1, that at some point they started using whole numbers, five, six, seven, eight. But it took Java, um, let's see if I can do the math here. So 18 years to go from 1.0 to eight. Um, you'll see that it's taken Java seven years to go from version eight in 2014 to the planned uh, next release of Java, which will be in March of next year. That'll be Java 16. So they, they really started spinning the version, um, you know, number faster recently. Um, and this, I think, reflects a shift in language paradigm, particularly as Java has started to encounter competition from similar languages. So there are now uh, other languages that, that reuse a lot of the Java ecosystem but are not Java. And I think those languages are having a really positive effect on Java because they're pushing Java to innovate and to you know release new things a little bit faster. So all of these releases you can see down here, you know Java 11, uh, which is where, if I remember correctly, uh, type uh, inference uh, first appeared, which we're showing you how to use today. Um, and then within the space of like two years, you see 12, 13, 14, 15 is out now. Uh, just came out. Our playgrounds are still using Java 14, but maybe we'll move to Java 15 now. I didn't even realize that it had been released. Um, so, you know, each one of these, um, and, and that's the other thing we can look down here, right? So, um, yeah, so let's see here. I think actually local variable type inference was Java 10, right? So that was 2018. Um, this uh, document gives you some information about the types of things that came out in, in each new version of the language. Um, and what, what's happening sort of is, 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 so there's a process in Java for proposing new features and having those features sort of vetted by the community. Um, and every version of Java that's been coming out recently, you can see 12, 13, 14, don't have quite a, as long a list. Um, and some of these aren't necessarily features that you would really encounter as a programmer. They're more sort of stuff that's built into the language uh, itself and all the tooling that comes with it that might make your code work a little better, but not as like a new piece of syntax. There have been some new pieces of syntax. So for example, uh, something called switch expressions. Um, we haven't even talked about switch cases yet. I think I'll put that in tomorrow. Um, but you know, this is a new variant on a, on a switch case, which is a, a type of if else uh, expression. Um, so actually we, we are using text blocks. So this was, this is a new way of allowing Java to have multi-line string literals. And the past support for multi-line string literals on Java was pretty terrible. Now they've added better support for it. Um, there's something called records, which are a simplified version of, of Java classes that just came out in Java 14. And then it looks like, okay, so Java 15 is adding, and, and some of these things aren't necessarily gonna make sense to you right now because we haven't, um, we haven't covered them yet. Uh, but these are new things that are being added. So, so the, the language is evolving. Uh, I think you know Java went through kind of a long period where it didn't change very much over time. And to some degree as a programmer, that's frustrating because you know that computers are getting faster and different languages are uh, pioneering new approaches to doing things and stuff like that. And you want the language that you learn 
and that you've used to keep up. And so recently Java has been doing better with that. Uh, but there was this long kind of period of time where, where Java didn't, um, didn't necessarily, wasn't adding things very often. It came out with sort of new releases every couple of years and they had a lot of stuff. But now I think they've really made this conscious decision. It's like, we're gonna release a couple times a year and every release will be smaller and just have a couple of new things. The other thing that you can't ignore when you talk about Java and its history and its recent evolution is Android. So this semester as part of the class, you're gonna build a small Android app and we're gonna walk you through the process of doing that. When Google picked the Java programming language as the way that you write Android apps, that obviously has an enormous impact on the language. When you know a big ecosystem like Android apps, I mean, there's billions of Android devices all over the world and probably tens if not hundreds of billions of different apps people have written for them. Well, maybe not that many, maybe like millions of apps, right? Um, and so the all of those programmers, until very recently, they wanted, if you wanted to write an Android app, there are some ways to do it with other languages, but really the, the most supported way and the most common way was to use Java. And so there was this big group of programmers that might not like Java, they might not have known Java beforehand, but they wanted to write an Android app, so they had to pick up Java. Recently, Google has actually started to support a new language for Android development called Kotlin that is, you know, I think in many ways a, a sort of like if, if you found Java 100 years in the future, it's like a very, very forward thinking version, variant of Java. It's a completely different language than Java. It's not an addition to Java. It has its own syntax and its own idioms. Um, but, you know, but so that's a really interesting change, I think. And so I think that's going to have an interesting impact on Java going forward. Uh, this sense of like, you know, will the language continue to be as popular? Now, Java's out there in the world. There's a lot of things out there in the world that are running Java. There's a lot of programs people have written in Java. That stuff doesn't go away just because Android stops pushing Java for, Google stops pushing Java for Android. We're gonna have Java code in the world for a long time. And there's lots of great tools for Java and those aren't going away. So don't worry about, you know, you're learning Java, what you, can you do with it? All sorts of things. But, you know, these shifts are happening all the time. New languages are coming out. Um, you know, a language that, you know, computer science is a young field, right? You know, maybe only about 50 years old. Java's been around for half of that. So it's not a young language. Um, and it'll be really fun to watch and to see what happens in the future, what new languages emerge, what new ways people find to work with computers and program them. Um, and you guys will have the, the opportunity to see a lot of that happen within your lifetime, which is pretty cool.